friends, starry and beautiful Sunday. Look at this. Isn't this gorgeous? I love it. Well, here's something. What do you do when you have people in your life that you love and you care for and, and they're hurting you? And when I talk about hurting you, I talk about people who that we are close with, either be it in our family, our spouses, our children, an aunt, an uncle, uh, a close friend, maybe somebody at church, uh, somebody in our circle that is actually affecting our lives because of how they are treating us, because of their own sin. Yeah, sin. I have had this week, I don't know how many uh, messages and emails about this subject. People contacting me, and I don't know what it is, and I think the Lord really pressed it upon my heart this week to talk about this this Sunday. Uh, people who have been, who are being hurt. They're being hurt by the people that they love. They're emotionally and physically and mentally drained. You can't take it anymore. You know, and then we have to ask ourselves, what is Jesus calling us to do? How should we react with these people in our lives? Now, when people write me, you know, the first thing I tell them is, you pray. You, you, you got to get on your knees and, and, and go to the Lord because every circumstance is going to be different. So what are we called to do? Are we called to just stand there and love thy enemy? Are we supposed to not say anything and just keep, um, you know, being a victim of their abuse, their slander? their meanness, their whatever is wrong with them, hmm? you know, I mean, here we are, we're given and we're caring, we're, we're trying to do what we can and then we just get nothing except a scowl or I want more or it's not enough or whatever it is, you know, every story is so different. So the first thing we need to remind ourselves is that there are six things that the Lord hates. And, and yes, seven actually, which are abomination uh, to him. Now, should we stop the video and you can start writing down what you think those seven uh, things are? Do you know them? Well, <laughs> we, won't stop the, we won't stop the video. Uh, you can, and, and you could write this stuff down and match it with my list. But the things that the Lord hates is haughty eyes, a lying tongue, a hand that sheds innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that run rapidly to evil, a false witness that utters lies, and one who spreads strife among brothers. Now, think about whoever it is that is hurting you. Are they doing any of those top seven? Probably. Now, what I just quoted was from Proverbs 6, uh, 16 through 19. Now, what this passage was about, it didn't say to stay away. It didn't say stay away, no. No, it just said that these are the six things or seven things that the Lord hates. But if we are to think about it and if we are wise, and the Lord wants us to be wise, I don't think he'd really want us to have close relationships with those people either, right? Well, a lot of us do have close relationships with people like that. And sometimes it's through no, you know, it's not by choice, it's because they're in our families. They may be a brother, a sister, an aunt, an uncle, a cousin. So what does that mean? Should we really stay away from them, even though we're connected by blood? Well, this is where you really have to go to God's word and think about what he calls us to do. Think about um, our uh, allegiance to Christ and how he does want us to be obedient. And the reason why he wants us to, to be obedient is because his plan is better. His path is better for us. And sometimes it calls us to do hard things. So the, call, the Lord is calling us to watch out for those traits. And he's also telling us to do, to do not be like that. I hate these things. 
I don't want you to be like that. And if, if there are people that are, are in your life that are showing these traits, don't, don't, don't spend your time with them. You know, it says uh, in Proverbs 22, uh, 24, 25, do not associate, listen to this, do not associate with a man given to anger. Okay, that, that, that's, that's pretty clear. Or go with a hot-headed man. Or you will learn his ways and find a snare for yourself. You know, God, God is awesome. You know, not only is he telling us who to stay away from, but he's also telling us why. Why? Because when you're hanging around somebody who's hot-tempered, you know, you might get entrapped by that. Well, what could that entrapment be? Uh, eliciting anger out of you. How many times have you been in a situation where somebody is really upset with you, they're being really nasty, they're screaming at you, and your, your anger is welling up in you. And you find yourself pretty soon yelling back. Yelling back until the point where you're both screaming at each other. I mean, have you ever experienced that in your life? I want to read this because I think it's important. Sometimes we allow ourselves to endure unnecessary wounding and relationships because we figure it's our duty. Because it's a place of humility and honors Christ. Well, there is a plethora of verses that instruct us to take up our cross and follow Christ. Like I was saying, you know, turn the other cheek. There's much needed discernment in applying godly wisdom to our relationship as well. In the light of these verses, and this is what this person wrote, I've had to realign some relationships. People I dearly loved but had violent tempers did indeed create sticky snares in my life that God wasn't calling me to be part of. I also learned to give less of my heart to people addicted to gossip and slander. So you see how God's word applies to each of us, but in the context of our own walk. And we may have to not give our heart fully to, to that person. We may have to walk away from another person. We may have to uh, leave them be and go our own way. And each circumstance and this is what this person said, where I had to limit the influence that person had in my heart, the individual was a professing believer. Isn't that sad? They were not open to any correction and did not change the facet of life. Or they got worse over the course of the years. None of my realigned relationships lost my love, forgiveness, or prayers. They were simply redirected off the main street of my heart. And remember... Forgiveness is a given, but perhaps he isn't requiring you to remain so close. Or maybe he wants you to lovingly confront that person. Check your motive for being close to the person. And is it healthy and Christ-centered? And lastly, just remember, you need to find balance in your, all your relationships. And in every relationship that you have, it should be God-centered in how you react, uh, how you give grace, how you give forgiveness. Everything belongs to the Lord, and that includes your heart. We have to remember it no longer belongs to us. And all we can do is ask for that wisdom to know the true cost of our heart and how to guard it with honor. All right, my friends, I really hope this helped your difficult situation that you're in now. May God bless you and give you the wisdom and the discernment that you need and give you the grace and the ability to forgive.